hello 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 everybody good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the plan in the planet earth i hope everything is okay and it's another super week super tuesday welcome back to adonai's kingdom the kingdom the channel we talk about the most high god we talk about adonai the one and only true God, and Yeshua, his only son, the Messiah. My name is Awaudi, the messenger, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, I want to bless you. I want to honor you, Father. I thank you for this day, for this is the day that you've made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, O oh Lord. For everything that you've done for us, protection, guidance, feeding us with knowledge. In Yeshua's mighty name, we thank you and bless you, O oh Father. Glory be to you in Jesus' mighty name. Holy are your ways, mighty are your ways, O oh Jehovah. As I come before you, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We put everything before you, O oh Father. We rely on you, O oh God. Bless my viewers. Help them open up their, let them open their minds and hearts, O oh Father, so that they can understand the message that you're passing unto them. In Yeshua's mighty name, Amen and Amen and Amen. Welcome again, guys. <clears throat> it's another week, another super Tuesday. And uh, yeah, today. We're going to talk about, uh, we are still in the book of Joshua, or Yehoshua, and uh, we are in chapter 18 of Joshua. And this, in chapter 18, we are talking about uh, the inheritance, the distribution of the land, where the children of Israel were being given land by Joshua. Joshua had been instructed by the Most High to distribute so let's see how it goes it's joshua chapter 18 i think i'll read uh, the first 10 verses that's where my main message is uh joshua 18 eh? and verse 1 and the entire congregation of the children of israel assembled at the at shiloh shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So all the rest had received their, about five tribes, to make them twelve, had received their inheritance, but the seven had not yet received their inheritance. Verse 3, and Joshua said, How long are you slack to come in to possess, your, to possess the land? And Joshua said, How long are you slack to come in and possess the land which the Lord God of your forefathers has given you? Verse 4, Appoint for yourself three men for each tribe, and I will send them. They shall arise and go through the land, describe it according to their inheritance, and they shall come to me. And they shall divide it into seven parts. Judah shall remain in his border on the south, and the house, house of Joseph shall remain in their border on the north. You shall describe the land into seven parts and bring it here to me, and I will cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. Verse seven. For the Levites have not part have no part among you, for the priesthood of their of the Lord is their inheritance. And God and Reuben. Half the tribe of Manasseh have taken the inheritance 
on the eastern side of Jordan, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave them. Verse 8, and the, and the men arose and went, and Joshua charged those that went to describe the land, saying, Go and walk through the land and describe it, and return to me, and I'll cast lots for you here before the Lord in Shiloh. And the men went and passed through the land and described it by the cities into seven parts in a book. And they came to Joshua to the camp at Shiloh, and Joshua cast lots for Shiloh before the Lord. And there Joshua divided the land to the children of Israel according to their divisions. As when we go back, the title of today's message is Land Distribution Inheritance. It's about land distribution and inheritance. So if you, we go back to verse number three, that's where there, there are some places where the Holy Spirit was taking me. Verse number three, and Joshua said, how long are you slack to come in to possess the land which the Lord God you have, the Lord God of your fathers have given you? That is according to the Torah. That's Torah. And if we go to the King James Version, it says, And Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long ye slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? It's almost the same. But in re reality, it's how, why are you lazy to go and possess your land? That was then. Now, the Lord is asking you, you know, we have possessions as Christians, as, the, as children of the Most High God. You have possess, poss possession in your heart. Because God puts everything in, inside your heart, not in your mind. Because if he had put any inheritance in your mind, you'd be blown away. Your mind tries to imagine, but your possession is in your heart. That's why you find everything. In most cases, even when it comes to gifts, it comes to your heart. You see, God plants everything inside your heart. And if, if you can listen to the Holy Spirit, you know what your inheritance is. Because it's like your heart, your soul will be communicating to your mind and you'll be doing what you want. Your gift, your vision will be coming out. So you, the vision is always inside you. You don't have to wait for somebody else to come and tell you that to do something or you need or you have to copy somebody because so and so did such a marvelous thing in his life you want to copy it and that's what's happening in the world of this world of us right now people tend to copy others we ape others all the time you see somebody started starting a certain business you go with that one that was his vision god put that vision in his heart but you, since you are lazy, Joshua said, how long are you slack to come in to possess the land? Since you are lazy out there, you don't, you don't want to possess. You are waiting for the ones, the, the ones that have been possessed so that you grab the vision, a bit of the vision from the, from the others. You see a brother or a sister in your church or anywhere at work doing something that he or she loves very much. It's her vision. It's his vision. But you, with your small mind, you copy it. Forgetting that you are full of visions inside you. You are just mentally lazy. You don't want to activate your inheritance. It's the high time, brethren. You started activating. Don't wait and look at somebody saying that he has this... Let me do because he's doing well in business. I think I should do that one also. No, sit down, pray to God, ask God, seek the Holy Spirit, 
and the revelation will come to you. You'll notice that what you've been yearning since you were a kid, but all these years you've been just lazing around, coping people. That's why you find you never succeed in anything. You try something halfway, along the way, you give it up. You start another one. So your life will be just going up and down, up and down. So go for your vision. Don't be lazy in getting your inheritance. You don't need, you don't need to be prodded. Don't be afraid of something new. And that's the problem. We are afraid of new things. People are investing millions of pounds, of dollars. But you, you don't want to try something new with your hundred dollars or maybe fifty dollars because you are afraid you lose it. And people outside are really trying. Later on, you say those people, how come they are making it in life? It's because you're not taking the risk. You are slack in coming to possess the land that the Lord has given you. Wake up there. Wake up my brother. Wake up my sister. Stop being slack. Don't be afraid. Just fulfill what God has called you to do. Possess your land. Don't say it's it's for the world. No. If it's yours, it's yours. You know, Christians usually say when they see somebody being moving up, is blessed. They say, "Oh, that's the worldly thing." No. If you are you are you are born, you are created to possess everything. So don't don't just say that it's for the world. Go out and possess your land and come back and thank God. If we jump to Luke if we if we go to Luke uh, chapter the book of Luke chapter 16 there's something here that can encourage you out there. Luke chapter number 16 and verse 8. The master commanded the... You see, here, the Lord says, The master commanded the dishonest ma manager because he had acted shrewdly. It was... Let's start from 17. Then he asked the second, And how much do you owe? And a thousand... He said, a thousand bushels of wheat, he replied, and he told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master command, if you just go through Luke chapter 16, and then you'll see it's about the world, how it operates. The master commanded the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than the people of the light. Even Jesus said, we people are so shrewd they are cunning they know how to deal when it comes to business but the children of light the children of the most high god the children of adonai they are waiting for handouts they are waiting waiting to be employed they don't want to create employment activate your blessing go and possess it okay uh from verse 11 if we carry on uh, verse number 11, let's see about the inheritance here. Uh, the lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin came up according to their families and the border of their lot went out between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. Okay. Uh, and... Their border on the north side was from the Jordan and the border went to the side of Jericho on the north and went up through the hill westward and it's going out where? to the wilderness of Bethaven. So I just wanted to show you guys that uh, you'll find in this, uh, it's about Benjamin. Benjamin was the last born. When this inheritance were being issued out you'll find in uh, 
Genesis, Be Benjamin was the last born. And in uh, if Genesis chapter 49, let me check quick, quick. Okay, Genesis 40. Yeah. In in the book of Genesis chapter 49, we are being told about Benjamin, how the inheritance, because God had planned for his in the uh, the inher inheritance long long way back and because he knew the character of Benjamin and Judah so 49 and verse 27 it's, uh, 49 verse 27 when Jacob was giving was blessing his, chil his children verse number 27 it goes like this Benjamin shall be raving as a wolf in the morning and he shall devour the prey at night he shall divide the spoil see benjamin he was the last one and he was not a good fighter so god knew the plans for benjamin he wasn't a good fighter so you notice here that he was he had to be placed where help could come by any time when he was in trouble you see in uh, in this verse 27 they said he shall be like a raven wolf usually the wolf the operate at night and in the morning he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil so benjamin was the type that he can't go and fight in the light in the brightness so he had to do it at night when People are a bit weak, so he was like, uh, he was not that strong. In short, the same thing happens when you are not strong and you're going for your inheritance. Don't worry, God will place you where help is at hand. God will always place you where help is at hand. Uh, and you'll find that here, since Joseph had always loved Benjamin. God placed them next to each other. That's in uh, the same Genesis, verse 49, 22 to 24. You'll see, uh, Joseph had a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a, a well, whose branches ran, ran over the wall. The archers were sorely grieved with him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in, in strength, and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. That's Joseph. Joseph was a stone. Was always, he was always steady and ready because of the help from God. And then you'll find Judah was also next to Joseph. Because they know Judah, they said he was like an active, like a small cub, a lion cub. So, you know, small, small cubs, they have to be protected. So you find uh, in 49 verse 8 to 12, this is what uh, Jacob was saying. Judah, verse 8, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou shalt had gone up and stop, stop, stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him? Verse 10. The, the scripture shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And to him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his fall unto the vine and his ass colt unto the choice vine. And he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Get that verse 11. That's verse 11. And his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. 
he's talking about Judah. And if you look at Judah properly, where, I mean, Judah is the one who protects his brothers. Judah protects his, bro his brothers. In uh, Genesis 37, G Genesis, Genesis 37, 26 to 27. We are told here that 7 verse 26 to 27. It says, Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. You remember, Judah here was saving Joseph from, from being killed by the brothers. That's, when, that's whereby later on they had to sell. Joseph was sold and he was taken to Egypt. So Ju Judah was like a protector. He was always there protecting. He, I mean, his job was to protect. And you'll find in that verse 49, you find, we, we just read that. You can't disturb. Judah was not to be disturbed. Let's go to verse 11. Binding his fowl unto the vine and his ass caught unto the choice wine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. And then if we go, if you jump to Matthew, chapter number 21 if you go to matthew chapter 21 verse 1 to 3 it's very interesting here matthew 21 okay verse uh, 1 to 3 and as, as they approached jerusalem and came to beth bethage on the mount of olives jesus sent his two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a, her colt by her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks, says anything to you, tell them, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. Only the Lion of Judah knows what is to come and what is planned. Jesus was from that lineage, the lineage of Judah. And all these things, it's like we were being given from the Old Testament. In verse, verse 11 of uh, this Genesis 49, binding his fowl unto wine and his ass colt unto the choice. I mean, bits and pieces we are being given clues of what was going to happen later on in the New Testament. So you find do the donkey and the colt were tied waiting for an appointed time and a specific reason and season. It wasn't by chance. These things had been planned from way, way, way back below, before. So even now, when you receive your inheritance, in short, you still need to protection from God. You see, in this uh, book, Joshua, people are being given inheritance, but he was placing them. Each one of them, each tribe was being placed whereby if the, strong one, the strongest one was next to the enemies, and then the weakest were in between. So if you find you don't have to worry when you're going for your inheritance. You, you, you say that, oh, if you succeed in life, I'll have so many haters. People will be fighting me. Yeah, that's part of life. Being fought. People fighting you. But one thing you should know. That you are protected. You are protected seriously. And God will always send his angels. God will send his angels to you. And he'll make sure that you are protected you will see if we see uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter number Psalms, 
23 and verse 1 to 6. Psalms 23, verse 1 to 6, it says, A psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You, I won't worry. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. I mean, why worry? And you are being led in still waters. Pastures, your inheritance are there. He restoreth my soul and leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God won't let you down. Because if he blesses you, he has to send a protector. Because he knows the enemy is there. They want to see if you fail, they'll start laughing. And it's not they're not laughing at you. They'll be mocking God. So for him, his name's sake, he will lead you. He will lead you. And also you find in verse 4, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, you see, just walking in those shadows, you'll be walking where haters are, people fighting you. But of course, don't stop, keep on walking. The, the psalmist didn't say, though I stand. No, he was passing through the valley of the shadow of death. But he was protected. The angels are surrounding you. Don't worry about getting your land, your inheritance. Don't, man should not... You should not be worried of man. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are... These are words that we are being given by the Holy One of Israel. We should not be afraid completely. Completely, completely. Okay. If we jump to Isaiah. Psalms. Isaiah chapter, 20, chapter number 26. Isaiah 26. And that's uh, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 to, to 4. We are, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he has trusted in you. For trust you in the Lord forever. For he in Jehovah, Lord Jehovah is the everlasting strength. And then you can read later on Psalm 37, 22 and 29 and 34. All of this, Jehovah is with you. Go for your land. Go for your inheritance. Don't panic. This land distribution right now. Go for it, brother, sister. Amen and amen. For you who are, don't know about Christ, Lord, just say this quick prayer with me. Father, I've sinned against the word and against you. I come to you as a sinner forgive me of all my sins i want to be part and parcel of the kingdom of god help me and i realize jesus christ is lord of my life in jesus name amen if you say that prayer you are a child of god you are one and only join a church near you and you'll be blessed for my viewers god bless you god protect you guide you and show you the way forward Go for your land. Don't worry. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys next time. Bye. Mm, come on. Amen and amen.